G'day, my name's Dan, and let's spend the next few minutes going over the Hyperfish product from an end user's perspective. On the home page, we have the profile web part, showing the user exactly where their profile is at this current moment. As you can see, Justin here is missing his profile picture and six other pieces of information. Walking through the wizard, Justin can update his profile right here from the intranet. Using Hyperfish's validation rules, Justin can be told that he's not allowed to have this photo because there's too many faces. Most fields in Active Directory are plain text. Hyperfish allows you to add a governance layer to be able to provide known values, such as job titles. Now that Justin's walked through the wizard, the profile web part shows him that his profile is 100% complete. What it doesn't show him is that some of his changes may need to be approved by somebody. And for this, he would need to open up his profile page. Opening up his profile page, he can see that some of his changes are still pending with his photograph, his job title, department, office location, and company name. What this pending note signifies is that there is approvals that need to be made. Once those approvals have been made, these changes will be committed to Active Directory or to the Office 365 profile. With the complete profile, Justin can now go into the directory to search up other users. As a quick note, you don't need to have a complete profile to actually utilize the directory. The Hyperfish Live directory allows the end user to be able to utilize any of the attributes that Hyperfish knows about as filters and also to use freeform text. If I wanted to browse all the people in the human resources department, I can simply select human resources in the department attribute. I can change these results from the card view that as you can see now to a table view. And I can also select on the user to find out more information about them. To see where they sit within the organizational chart, I can simply select on the org chart icon and it will give me a representative view of where that person sits in the organization. To get a complete view of the organization, we can use the Hyperfish org chart web part. Utilizing this web part, we can zoom in on the actual organization and we can see how many people report into that particular user. For example, I can look at Sanjay here, who is the CIO. I can see that he has four direct reports. I can simply select on the card icon here to see Sanjay's full set of details. And I can select on his card to open up to show me the people that report into him. I can continue drilling down into the organizational chart as far as I wish. The web part can be configured to have any user at the top of the food chain. So if I wish to have the organizational chart from the CIO down, I could configure the web part to have Sanjay at the top of the food chain and only show the IT department underneath the CIO. In addition to prompting the user at the homepage using the profile web part, Hyperfish also sends out emails. These emails are to prompt the end users to fill in the information that may be missing or incorrect within the directory. Here you can see an email that's been sent from the Hyperbot and it's informing Justin that he's missing his profile picture, department and office location. All Justin has to do now is select the update my profile button here in the email. Hyperfish also sends out a snapshot email. This snapshot email can be configured to be sent out at any given time greater than a month. 
The Hyperfish Administration Portal provides reporting for the administrators to show interaction with end users and also the health of the directories. Here the administrators can see any pending changes that require approval. Administrators can be set up to approve all attributes. Over in the settings under approvals, individual attributes can have auto approval or needing approval. At the same time, approvers can also be set up to have only approval delegation for particular attributes. Hyperfish has three different modes. Analyze mode, pilot mode, and run mode. Analyze mode is the mode that Hyperfish goes into when it's first installed. When Hyperfish is first installed, it simply scans the directories and gives you the reports that I mentioned earlier. From there, you can move to pilot mode. Pilot mode allows you to run the Hyperfish service for a selected number of users. This user total can count up to 20. Once you've completed your pilot and you're happy with the wording and branding of the Hyperfish service, you move the dial over to run. Once in run mode, it now goes out to the entire organization, all based on your directory targeting. Setting up Hyperfish is a simple process. Firstly, we have a number of attributes that are automatically added into the service and mapped to the fields within your Active Directory and Office 365 profiles. From there, set up your formats. The formats are the governing layer over the top of the attributes. For example, if I go into my department format, here I've stipulated all of the values that I wish the end users to be able to select from. Once I have my format, I can go to my attribute and apply that format to the attribute. From here, I can select if the attribute is hidden, read-only, editable, or Hyperbot and editable. Once you have your attributes set up, you can set up your branding. You can set up your branding to make it look exactly like your intranet homepage. From the email communications branding to the web page branding. We also have vanity domain support. The Hyperbot settings allow you to change the name of the Hyperbot. So rather than receiving an email from Hyperbot, you could change this to somebody's name. It could be the CTO, it could be a fictional character. From here, you can also set up the personality of the Hyperbot to change the way the wording is done within the emails. It can be relaxed or formal, or it can be set up as custom wording. Setting up the tenacity is an important part of Hyperfish. As I showed earlier, with the emails, the emails can go out to prompt the end users to update their profile. If they're missing information or have incorrect information that doesn't validate against the data or the rules that have been placed on the attributes, this tenacity meter shows you how often the end users will receive that email. By default, it's set to every two days. One last setting before we finish up is the collections. The collections play an important part in a large organization. This allows the organization to target groups of users within their organization and have different settings for them, whether it be branding or different phone validation rules. Collections is how you target those users to push those rules out. If we'd like to know more or have some questions about Hyperfish, get in contact with us at sales at hyperfish.com.